Warning. Tests featured in this presentation represent gross abuse of the product and may potentially void the warranty. Many of the feats shown are incredibly dangerous and could result in serious injury or even death. All tests are performed by skilled professionals within controlled environments and should not be attempted at home. Meat used within this presentation was sourced from local butchers and was already intended for human consumption. The meat was carefully and hygienically preserved and donated to the Ventura County Mission. This presentation may be deemed too graphic for some individuals and viewer discretion is advised. Hi, my name is Len Thompson. I'm the president of Colt Steel Incorporated and the chief instructor of our training division. I would like to welcome you to our presentation, Apocalypse Proof. We want to prove to you, again, why you should spend your hard-earned money on our products. When the chips are down, when the balloon goes up, when your life is on the line, you can depend on Colt Steel products. This end of the world theme has been a lot of fun to work with. We don't take ourselves too seriously, and we have enjoyed taking the time to come up with all these graphic feats and demonstrations. I hope that you have as much fun watching it as we did making this. And remember, don't try this at home. By now, many Cold Steel fans will be familiar with some of the tests and feats performed in our infamous proof series. Most are self-explanatory, but other feats may be new to you so we thought we would give you a brief explanation of some of our tests and their significance. We use incredibly tough and abrasive manila rope for many of our cutting tests. It not only demonstrates the superior strength and sharpness of our products, but it places a great deal of shock on the locking mechanism of a folding knife. In our experience, the vast majority of factory-made knives are unable to sever even a single one-inch strand of free-hanging manila rope. These cable-braided nylon and polypropylene ropes are often used for mooring ships, often over three inches thick and made from hundreds and hundreds of braided strands. They are incredibly tough to cut. Very few swords in the world can cut these dense, thick ropes, let alone a knife. Flexing the knife by hand, or by using the added leverage of a steel pipe, places incredible pressure on the knife and is an extreme test of durability and flexibility. Subjecting a folding knife to this test is even more radical, as it places a huge amount of stress on the moving parts within the locking mechanism. We subject our knives to much higher stresses and much steeper angles than any knife would encounter under normal use. There are multiple flex tests, and the aim is not always for the knife to return to true. Rather, it is simply for the knife to survive the test, flexing without cracking or breaking. In our experience, very few knives can withstand this extreme abuse. Locking a folder in a vise and hanging weight from the handle is a severe test of lock strength. In this presentation, you will see a wide variety of folding knives, from small, everyday carry knives to our extra-large, world-renowned folders, hold truly record-breaking weights. Many of the knives on today's market are incapable of holding a fraction of these weights. To help put this in perspective, a vast number of the industry's expensive custom and production folders fail at a measly 40 pounds or even less. Spine wax and overstrikes place tremendous shock on the locking mechanism of any folder. These tests simulate hard use and gross abuse of a knife, as well as the unforeseen stresses and shock during extreme circumstances. We have found that the overwhelming majority of folding knives that are on the market today are incapable of surviving these grueling tests. This incredibly dangerous and very abusive test subjects our knives and their locking mechanisms to a tremendous amount of shock. By stabbing the unforgiving surface of a 600-pound table at unusual or unconventional angles, we place tremendous strain on the lock. Under no circumstances should you attempt to replicate this feat. 
the vast majority of knives on the market today will fail this test. We use these spiral wound, heavy duty mailing tubes for everyday cutting and penetration tests at our facility in California. These incredibly tough tubes are over four inches in diameter and have a crush weight of over 200 pounds. Made from compressed cardboard and glue, they are not only very difficult to cut, but they wreak havoc on the edge of all but the very best swords and knives. We have seen several expensive handmade swords break while attempting to cut through these deceptively tough targets. Cutting multiple targets at speed is a skill in itself, but to do so safely and with such clean, crisp cuts is also a testament to the quality of the knife being used. Chopping, carving, and splitting wood is a surprisingly tough test for many knives. As blades become more specialized, their design and edge geometry may not be suited for these tasks. These cutting feeds represent hard use of a knife in a true emergency situation. Tatami have been used as the traditional cutting target in Japan for centuries. These rolled rice straw mats are said to replicate the density of human flesh and are famously used for testing the cutting ability of both the katana and its wielder. Cutting through a thick mat with even a 30-inch sword is considered quite a feat. That's why we choose to duplicate these tests to showcase the cutting power of our much lighter and shorter knives. One of the primary uses of a knife since time immemorial is to cut meat. Making deep cuts into meat provides a graphic but realistic test of our blade's sharpness. We use a variety of different meat targets to not only test the blade's cutting and chopping potential, but also its point and edge strength when encountering bone. The earliest adopters of Cold Steel's products were military and law enforcement personnel, as well as members of the martial arts and self-defense community. The use of human analog targets has been something we have long explored here at Cold Steel, but up to now we considered it too graphic for the public. However, due to popular demand by our fans, having seen similar targets used widely on TV shows over the last few years, we have included some of these tests here. This testing may be considered particularly graphic and viewer discretion is advised.